My name's Jay, and I'm from Sydney, Australia. I'd like to thank Rachel for organising this Better Together pop-up event because it's a sentiment I wholeheartedly agree with. Doll collecting is so much better with friends, and I cannot count how many friends I've made through conventions and the doll collecting community. Today I'll be sharing with you some of my Tonner collection. There's a few bits and pieces you might not have seen before. So, I'm packed and ready to go. Care to join me? These are dolls produced by the Robert Tonner Company. All stunningly beautiful. All different. But what causes the spark, the initial creation of these beauties? Just an idea, something seen in a magazine, or is it the material that inspires an outfit? I'll be taking you behind the scenes to show you some of the special creations that come through as part of the production of it all. I'll be using different terms that I've seen in the industry, such as Production sample. This is a sample sent from the factory to the company for approval. A styling or hair sample. A prototype. This is, this is hand painted by the company and given to the factory to copy for the final production version. Another sample given for approval, for licensing, for the actor, all have to be approved before they can be mass produced. And finally, a production version full with hair and face paint. These dolls are production samples sent from the factory to check out details to make sure things like skin tone are correct and all the jointing is working properly. This is a sample of the 17 doll. These are samples of Victoria from Twilight. You can see one has a lighter skin tone and is on a flat footed body. And this is a rooting sample of Victoria. And this is a sample of the Ava Gardner doll. She is on a smaller busted body than the production version. This is a production sample Esme. She has never been produced with this hair color or this hairstyle with a swirl in front. Most notably, she's got very pale eyebrows and they are very detailed. This is Tyler Wentworth from 1999 in her basic outfit. In 2001 she got new makeup and this is a basic Tyler wearing cosmetic campaign. This is Tyler with bend arms with a new take on her basic outfit. And this is the last basic Tyler from 2016 with an elevated version of her basic outfit. These are all factory produced Tylers. But did you know that Robert Tonner also painted his own version of Tyler as limited edition and convention gifts? This is Covergirl Tyler. She borrows Esme's Covergirl outfit and was a special edition 
This edition for F.A.O. Schwartz was hand painted by Robert. You can see that he's added eyelashes, upper and lower, as well as eyeshadow to Tyler. This is gold standing ovation Tyler. She was a thank you gift for the convention helpers for the first Tonner convention. The hairstyling and outfit was done by the Tonner company and as you can see Robert has done a lot more on the face makeup with adjustments to her eyebrows as well as her lashes. This is a Tyler Wentworth with inset eyes. This was never produced. Next to her is another Tyler as a BJD. Tyler version 2 was mass produced but Tyler version 1 was never produced. You can usually tell what a doll is by the markings on the head. This doll is very interesting. This is marked as Deja Vu. When you stand her up, here is a hand-painted sample of Deja Vu, but not quite. Here is the production version of Deja Vu. Notice the difference? Here is the hand-painted sample of Deja Vu, so you can compare the two. That's right, the mold has totally changed. First doll marked Deja Vu turned into Miette, and the doll that turned into the production version is actually marked Deja Vu 2. I wonder if there are any other secrets in the Deja Vu line. Indeed there are. Here we have the Deja Vu male. Not much difference at first glance, but when you turn them around, you'll see that the prototype has different markings on the top of the head to the production version. Oh my indeed, but is that all the secrets? Of course not. This doll is marked Deja Vu Friend. She was never produced, so we will never know. Was she friend or foe? Here is an example of a pre-production hand-painted sample next to the production version. Here we have James Dean. And this is Finn from the Steampunk series. You can see with both of them, there is a lot more subtlety in the hand-painted version to the factory version. This is a very special doll. This is Zoe, and she came out before Tyler and was shown in Toy Fair in 1998. These are hand-painted samples. The clothing is sewn on. I was very interested to compare them to Tyler, who came out a year later. Tyler is similar to Zoe, but they're made by the same sculptor. So, I think they could be cousins. Disney has always been out of this world for me, and so the pairing of Disney and Tonna were a match made in heaven. Please excuse Snow White's dress, she's not looking the fairest of them all at the moment. But first doll is a hand-painted prototype and a production sample from the factory. You can see that her colours are quite different to the production version. much more muted and you can see the face paint on the sample matches 
the production version much closer. What I find interesting about this doll is the pre-production version gave her blue eyes, whereas Snow White actually has brown. And to top it off, another hand-painted sample with blue eyes. I love stories and especially the stories that not everyone gets to hear. I really enjoy all the behind the scenes of TV shows and movies where they show you how they did things. And for me, collecting samples are in of themselves their own unheard story. You wonder why a character wasn't made or why doesn't someone do this character from a TV show or that character. And maybe they tried. These treasures give us bits of information of what could have been and you know it's fascinating to think of all the work that happens behind the scenes and we only get to see a small portion of what gets eventually produced. In 2001 Tonner brought out Tyler Wentworth in Midnight Garden, a Stunning doll. Later that year, a movie came out called Princess Diaries, and the dress had quite a similarity to Midnight Garden, although it would take several years before Tonna was able to produce this stunning outfit. With Princess Mia, her grandmother was also produced as part of the line. Before Mia became a princess, she was a normal everyday teenager. This is a hand-painted sample of Mia in her school uniform, which was never mass-produced. You can see quite a difference between the before and after, including her glasses and bushy brows before her princess makeover. I love the detail of the two little barrettes in her hair. She would have been an amazing addition to this series. This time we go through the looking glass with three Alice's. First, Alice has a bit of a slimmer face, and excuse her appearance, she's been chasing rabbits down rabbit holes. You can see there is no embroidery at the end of the dress, like the others have. The second Alice looks just like the actress, and there's some details missing on the dress, and the construction is a little bit different to the final product. The production version. In 2018, Robert Tonner introduced Wonder Woman, coinciding with the release of the movie of the same name. She was made on a new body, which was superposable. But what would happen if she was actually even more posable? This is a sample of a Wonder Woman with a ball-jointed body that would have made her even more posable to put into those kick-ass poses that Wonder Woman is known for. This is an interesting little Betsy wearing a Wonder Woman costume. Although the costume is exactly the same as the production version, she has auburn hair with bangs. 
something that none of the actresses that have played Wonder Woman have had. I wonder if she was just available and they put the costume on her, or they wanted to try a different look for Wonder Woman. Here are three production sample elements and prudence. All from conventions. This Elowen is letting off steam. Prudence and Elowen are from On We and Me. What's curious about these three is that the production versions came with inset eyes. This is the production version of Elowen in letting off steam. There's slight differences in material, but overall, she's basically the same. Elowen and Prudence are both hand-painted. This Elowen seems to be FAO Schwartz exclusive overdressed. With some minor changes in face makeup and totally different hairstyle. Speaking of hairstyles, this is a head of a styling sample Elowen, most likely for Grand Despair 2. Elowen has never had this combination of hair colors, and I think they just used whatever was on the machine. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've had fun. Can you guess which is my favorite tunnel line? Till next time, cheers.